The cool thing about that move too is that I, as I'm spinning out, because I have this overhook, it's basically where I need it to be anyways. It's like, so she, she completed the pass. And I go for my ghost escape. And I'm up. This arm's where it needs to be already. Because I, I already have this overhook through the armpit and I'm bringing it in right here. And really controlling the posture. Okay, so for this one, I'm kind of like pushing into her Do you need me to and chopping this down. I saw that face. Oh, I was trying to do home alone and it did not okay. help. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you need a switch? <laughs> so here, I'm putting pressure on her head and I'm kind of pulling my grip into her neck too. I'm gonna really fold her down and as I'm folding that her, her head down, I'm gonna bump with my shoulder and pull this at the same time. So it goes here. Right when she hits her, her hip, I don't want her to go all the way down because then I just have side control. Not the end of the world because I was, she almost passed my guard. I got out and then I, I got to side control, which is great. I want it. I want to bump her down to right here so I can hit the submission. So I don't want this one too deep because I'm just putting a lot of pressure like on the back of the neck here, which some people might tap to it, but it's not really choking. So I want to use like the rule of thumb. So I'm going to pull back just a little bit to where my thumb or my snuff box almost, it's more right here. You love that term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, rule of thumb, just bringing it in right into the back of her neck. Opening my palm, putting it on this bicep, and then collapsing it down, just like a rear naked choke grip. I'm gonna put this hand on her, and I'm gonna sprawl. So to put more weight onto this shoulder, to press it into that carotid, and then I'm gonna rock the baby and squeeze. Squeeze the baby. So, as I'm rocking the baby, I'm drawing this elbow up. That way my forearm is hitting this carotid. A lot of fine details, but that's what makes it work the best. So I'm sprawled, I'm gonna bring this elbow up, and then I'm gonna rock the baby and squeeze. All right. Here, I'm gonna drive her head down, I'm gonna pull, and then I'm gonna bump with my shoulder and that'll make her spin a little bit. Here. If I end up too far this way, I need to make an adjustment and come back, making sure I have my rule of thumb. Hand goes on the bicep, hand goes on their body. Sprawl, draw that elbow up, rock the baby and squeeze. Here. I would do it to Ivan because he's a higher rank, but I think Kayla likes to see your pain, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ivan's yeah. pain is fun too. <laughs> a little special. I just earn it more. So here, bump, fold, and pull with my grip. Make my adjustments, roll a thumb, hand goes on the bicep, hand goes on their body. Sprawl, draw the elbow up, rock the baby, and squeeze. <laughs> it works. <laughs> a lot of people's dart chokes feel very cranky, but if you add all those fine details into it with the drawing the elbow up, rocking the baby, it turns it into like a really nasty choke. So I think the most important part is the thumb placement. The thumb placement is huge. Otherwise it's cranky. Because if it's too deep, it will be pure crank. And you can't really go too shallow and still get the grip, but... Just try to place your thumb right there on their neck. Cool? All right, on three. One, two, three.